Welcome, everyone, to uh, Mexican Crossing Lines with your hosts, Cindy Gomez-Shemp. And Duke Gomez-Shemp. You're listening to 88.1 FM KPPPLP Fargo-Moorhead, where we are adding local color to your airwaves. And tonight, on my show, titled Up in the Air, I'm going to talk about how our lives have been upended during this uh, worldwide pandemic. Um, And I want to, well, not encourage, I guess, I want to encourage people, urge people to take this uh, pandemic seriously, to take the virus seriously, to take the instructions given to us by our local and state and federal governments seriously, because it has, it's very clear that people's uh, interpretation of what it means to social distance and what it means to stay at home are very different than what they actually mean. And the ramifications are that more and more people continue to get infected and continue to um, overwhelm our medical system. So we're going to cover all of that. I hope that if you have been struggling as I have with your friends and family members to get them to not just, you know, mouth and repeat what they know they're supposed to do, social distance, stay at home, avoid crowds, and what they're actually doing. If you've been having trouble convincing people in your family to stay away from crowds, to stay at home, whether it's a young person or your, your parents, whatever it is, you want to make sure that they watch this show so that we can have that conversation together and hopefully come up with some solutions. Uh, also, I want to thank those of you who sent us local stories as well as national and international stories to cover on our broadcast here at 88.1 FM. How can folks follow us and support the work of this station, Duke? Well, in many ways. And also, if you miss this show, you know, it's going to be on YouTube. Uh, you can find it on Facebook. Uh, if you're driving around Fargo-Moorhead right now listening to the radio, you can catch it at home. At Duke 1517 is a YouTube channel. And at Facebook, 88.1 FM Fargo-Moorhead. Also, you can go to our website, kppfm.com. And you can uh, find our stories there, our, our, our videos, um, audio files, uh, programming information. And while you're there, don't hesitate to support our organization by making a tax-deductible donation to us so we can continue this work and bring you the news that we're bringing you. You go to kppfm.com slash donate. Also, if you want to give us a call and just leave a message in our voice line, you can call 701 566 0917. Again, that number is 701-566-0917. I want to start out with the world numbers. Uh, Across the world, we have 
775,306 total confirmed cases. Uh, that's up from Friday when we last did our broadcast and we were at 590. Wow. You've got the one from Friday. I do. Yes. Whoops. That one there is the, la the, the, the old one. The new one, of course, is 775,306. So that's a lot just yeah. for the weekend. Mm -hmm. In the United States... We currently have over 100,000 cases. We're at 159,689 cases here in the U.S. And we have 2,951 deaths. Uh, New York is now at 66,000 total cases. That's 155, more than they had just yesterday. Uh, New Jersey is at 16,636 cases. That's up from 30, 37 cases from uh, yesterday. California is now at 6,528. Uh, Michigan is uh, climbing very rapidly. They're at 6,498. How many in North Dakota, Duke? Uh, well, I, I'll start with uh, actually with Minnesota. Minnesota. Uh -huh. And uh, Minnesota, there are... 500 and 676 have tested positive, uh, completed uh, test 18,822, uh, number of completed tests, and uh, we have 10, 10 deaths. deaths. Okay, oh boy. It keeps on going up here. Uh, and then you, you have 24 people in ICU, 56 people hospitalized. Total cases requiring hospitalization is 92 in Minnesota. Wow. Now and that number is climbing. Yeah, in North Dakota. Mm -hmm. It's uh, 109 positive cases, wow. 3,728 negative, 3,837 total tested, 19 recovered, 19 hospitalized, and two deaths, unfortunately. And, you know, I started, tra I told uh, Duke I was going to start tracking how uh, uh, my, my, my stream or my, uh, excuse me, my li um, Facebook feed um, how many people I personally knew oh. that either got sick or whose family members got sick and posted about it on social media. And um, on Friday, we shared the story that the nursing home where our daughter works uh, had a case of COVID-19. One of the healthcare workers at, from Samford Health ended up catching it. And this nurse practitioner who tested positive for coronavirus uh, was at the Moorhead Eventide facility on Mon Monday, March 23rd. They experienced symptoms of COVID during their visit, and they then went and got tested. Eventide was not notified that this uh, healthcare worker tested positive until Friday when this news came out for the rest of the people in our community. Yeah. So it was very um, disturbing, I guess. Yeah, uh, we, for sure. uh, we, we were very, very concerned, not only for uh, our daughter, but for the residents um, at this facility. So uh, I contacted Eventide to get commentary from them about what occurred, and this is what they had to say. Living, this is Carrie. Hi, Carrie. I'm calling from 88.1 FM Radio. I wanted to ask you some questions about the story in the Friday evening news about medical personnel that had tested positive for COVID-19 and had been at your facility. Yes. So from the news story, it, it appears that that person had been at the facility last week. Sure. Of what happened. Um, we found out late Friday that one of the outside, um, well, like a nurse practitioner from Stanford who had been in our building on Monday, we found out late Friday that she had tested positive for COVID. So the question... Uh -huh. Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Uh, the, the, question, the question I have about that is... Um, the, did the person that tested positive, they, it said in the story they had symptoms 
while they were at eventide was that notified to the eventide staff or personnel i don't think what i heard was that she had symptoms after she left eventide oh okay but i i did see that reported that way but there was a lot of misinformation i see so nobody at the facility was actually aware, and this person did not make anybody aware while they were at Eventide that they were having symptoms. We weren't notified until she had tested positive. So we didn't know anything until late Friday. Okay. And that, that, that individual, nobody, nobody else in the facility that was there that day um, was told by the individual that she suspected that she had it and was getting tested? No, and I don't, I really believe that when she was at our facility on Monday, I don't believe she had any suspicions yet because she would not have come in if she had thought she was symptomatic. Yeah, I was wondering about that. And what what is your um, protocol right now? Well, even even before this uh, case emerged, what is your protocol with uh, regard to your staff and uh, testing for people that have symptoms or, or feel like they might not be well? Well, we tell any staff that if they feel any symptoms at all, that they should not, they are not allowed to come to work. Okay. And then we also screen all of our staff when they do come to work, so that's taking temperature and asking other questions. Yeah. And the nurse practitioner from Sanford was screened when she came in on Monday and her temperature was normal and everything was normal. And we have all that documented. So now that there has been a person that has tested positive that's been at your facility, what, what steps are you taking to protect your staff and your residents. So when this all started happening weeks ago, we put certain precautions in place at that point. Um, and here I'm just gonna pull up what I had posted on our website because that has the timeline here. Sure. sure. Sorry. Would have been good to take. What's up? Um, she had to look at on her computer. So on March 12th yeah. is when we implemented our COVID-19 response plan, mm -hmm. which included closing our doors to all visitors. So that's when people weren't able to come and see their families anymore or visit their loved ones. And we stopped doing any kind of group activities with the residents or any of um, group uh, dining we stopped doing. Mm -hmm. And that's when we started to monitor um, employees when they would come to work. Mm -hmm. Screen them, excuse me, is the right word. And then that's when we also started monitoring and screening residents once a day, too, just to be on the safe side. Mm -hmm. And then after this happened on Friday, we started um, screening residents twice a day. Mm -hmm. And then um, staff... Um, are still getting screened when they come to work. And then um, they were already wearing um, personal protective equipment when we started this on March 12th. Mm -hmm. But we did implement now that they were to wear masks at all times to protect themselves. Okay. Um, and then we also, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to um, also mention that we work um, with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, so CMS. Mm -hmm and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, and then also the Department of Health. And since this happened on Friday, the Minnesota Department of Health is involved as well. Okay. Um, how has the fact that uh, residents were evacuated from another nursing home after the fire that occurred prior to the pandemic at Elam affected the uh, capacity of your facility to quarantine residents? Well, we, um, you know, we took on residents when that happened, 
but we were still, you know, working within our numbers where we could manage helping people. So um, everybody is quarantined to their rooms, and we're standing. We're following our standard protocol, you know. And this is also still influenza season, so we will. We were already taking a lot of um, preventative measures because of that. Mm-hmm. So, currently, uh, when you say that you are quarantining uh, residents to their rooms, they're able to do that without another resident in their room, correct? Um, I would have to check. Well, I, if, if somebody suspected of having um, a virus of some sort, yes, they would be quarantined. Um, I'd have to check on the situation with double rooms, just in general. Oh no! I mean, from from what I, from what you reported to the public, it seemed like after this contact with this uh, nurse practitioner, that the residents were basically quarantined to their rooms, or you know, they're not allowed to have group gatherings or group meals well, anymore. We, we were already doing that for all residents. Oh, okay just so that if somebody did have something that they're not passing it passing it to each other so we already were doing that okay and yeah they have but, everybody has their own individual room so they can actually quarantine alone um I, I'd have to check on that because at some of our communities there are still some double rooms so I would just have to check on that part okay I, I would appreciate I would appreciate a a, um, a response to that last question just to just to clarify what the what quarantine really means are people I believe that um, the rest of the conversation uh, was about asking about the the doctor in the in the facility that this occurred at eventide um, the the doctor that went to the facility is not an in-house doctor. They don't have an in-house doctor that takes care of all of their residents and doesn't interact with the public. So that, especially during a pandemic, can cause problems because this nurse practitioner was going from one nursing home to another nursing home. And the question I have well, there's 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 a lot of things, and I and I really do appreciate uh, the candidness with which um, Eventide responded to our questions. Mm-hmm. But this is not specific to Eventide. I I have this concern for all nursing homes across America. Uh, I know that at the very beginning of the pandemic, it was uh, you know put out in the public that people should probably try and go and get their um, elderly uh, folks out of those nursing homes and take them home because the nursing homes were going to be places where the the, the spread of the virus could be very, very quick and deadly because, you know, this is a high-risk group of folks. So when did your nursing homes lock down is the question. Mm-hmm. Do you know? I mean, uh, have you called your local nursing homes to find out when when did they actually lock it down? Because the later into the pandemic that the lockdown happened, the more likely there is to be uh you know, contact with the virus inside of the facility. And once you have that once you have that, then the spread is is harder to to contain. I did get a call back from the um, spokesperson from uh, Eventide that I interviewed, telling me that there were people that are doubled up in the same room, and that's how they live. So they will quarantine in place together for those folks that are two to a room. The second thing is, um. How do the residents get treatment? Why, I mean, the the fact that there's a traveling doctor that goes from nursing home to nursing home during a pandemic would have been a red flag for me. Oh, yeah. Like, I would have been like, you know, this might not be a good idea to do right now. There should be one dedicated uh, individual that, that 
doesn't leave that facility or doesn't have contact Mm -hmm. with the outside world because every time we're being told to shelter in place right now, we're being told to social distance. Every time somebody leaves the cocoon of, of safety that is your home and goes outside, you are at risk of exposure, okay? So the fact that you have somebody traveling around from home to home, from nursing home to nursing home, seems to me like an obvious uh, weak point yeah. that that could that would could infect the residents. So now, the nursing home, I was told uh, in in a in a subsequent call, they are actually tele um, conferencing medical visits for their residents. Good, good. That should be something all of the facilities across the country are doing right now. They don't want to uh, needlessly have contact with people inside the facility to check on them as this nurse practitioner was doing when from one nursing home to another and spreading the COVID virus to them inadvertently. So I, uh, I think that it is incumbent upon us as community members to ask these questions Mm -hmm. and to make those types of suggestions to the places where our elderly loved ones are. And, you know, this is really a a different situation. I mean, this virus, the way it spreads, how quick it spreads, you know, how deadly it is, it's different than anything we've dealt dealt with before. So our protocols have been set up for like the flu. And, uh, you know, and lots of people die from the flu, too. But it's like uh, these institutions are, you know, they're geared up to, to guard against the flu. But this this virus is, is a lot worse and it spreads a lot easier. And we don't didn't know that and don't know about that. And we're learning about that as people get sick, infected and die. And so, yeah, any measures we can take earlier, the earlier, the better. One of our listeners comments that they have a virtual video conference with their cardiologist tomorrow. Oh, Folks, you can do that now. And it, if you were thinking about hopping in your car and going down to the walk-in clinic because you're not feeling good, I would suggest that you rethink that appointment. Mm-hmm. You do not need to go to the doctor during a pandemic and go to a place that has more likely seen a lot of shedded virus mm-hmm. in, a, in the, in the uh, you know, lobby or the waiting rooms or the examination rooms. So look into uh, the card, you know, the, the conference calls, the video uh, yeah. medic, I don't know what they're called. Yeah. Um, and, and find out how you can see your doctor that way so that you don't have to go into uh, the overcrowded right now, really, um, you know, overwhelmed medical systems here in the United States as the virus continues to ramp up. And folks, I know that a lot of folks might be feeling the cabin fever. You might be thinking that you, you're sick and tired of hearing about what you need to be doing during the COVID-19 uh, virus. I'm here to tell you that this is not the time to tune out. Mm -hmm. This is not the time to run away. I get that you need to take a break sometimes, and I highly recommend that you do self-care. Whatever you need to do, sit in the bubble bath, learn how to meditate, you know? Yeah. Um, You know, give yourself uh, a face face mask, do do your nails. Um, find something that makes you happy, that makes you feel joy, that makes you feel relaxed and do that for yourself. But you also have to pay attention to what is happening, especially with regards to the directives, the orders, the, 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 uh, executive orders that are coming out of our state, local and federal government. So you know how to stay safe and how to keep people safe. You know what we did all weekend? We called family members and asked them how they're doing on their social distancing. What does that word mean to you? How are you doing it? I've seen pictures of people that are bar hopping in North Dakota that are holding a rope in between themselves that are supposedly six feet apart 
but you're still going out to the bars. Mm -hmm. You're missing the point here. Exactly. You're not supposed to be going out and just hashtagging social distancing on your pictures of you and your friends standing far away from each other. That's not how this works. Flattening the curve requires for you not to take those kinds of risks and to stay home. Let me give you an example. This photo from folks in Shakopee, Minnesota has gone viral oh, yeah. throughout the country. They post, uh, and there's pictures of people sitting in a parking lot approximately six feet away from each <laughs> other. The cars are anyway. And they're sitting in the back of their trunks with their trunk doors open. And they're sitting there wrapped up in blankets and talking. And it says, when you're slowly losing your sanity, you find time to ditch all the kids so you can meet in an empty parking lot with your friends. We met at 7 a.m., drank coffee, ate breakfast, and chatted while maintaining social distancing in our safety of our trunks. And it was so needed and wonderful. Wow. No, <laughs> no, no, no. That is not social distancing. If you see, we let me explain something to you. When for those times when you need to go on a mission critical uh, outing of your house to get food, to get fuel, to get medicine, to go to the emergency room, when you have to leave for those purposes and those purposes alone or to walk your dog or take a, a run around your block for your own health that in in those brief moments when you go outside that is when you need to maintain a distance from anyone that might be out there of six feet or more and you're only going to be in close proximity to them for moments seconds right you want to minimize the amount of time if you are within six feet of another person, social distancing yourself for a prolonged period of time, 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour or two. If you sit in the trunk of your car having breakfast donuts with your friends and talking amongst each other, you are not social distancing because that prolonged contact with people talking and breathing and coughing and sneezing and all of that stuff will help spread the virus. It will spread the virus. And that is not what you're supposed to be doing. I get that it's boring being at home all the time. There is a story of, uh, well, I'm going to get to it in a minute here, but there is a bunch of people that went to a choir and um, a choir practice for an event that has since been canceled. And they all, uh, almost everyone that was there contracted the virus. And they all practiced social distancing mm -hmm. of six feet apart. They used hand sanitizer when they went in. Yep. And then when they went home, they self-quarantined husband and wife on two separate floors to avoid any contact. And guess what? They both still got it. They both still got it. So folks, you cannot be hanging out with your besties having beers outside like these dads are. Here's a bunch of dads so sh pr practicing their social distancing, oh, or wow. so they think. And this was tweeted, so, just some neighborhood dads enjoying some social distancing beers. No, folks, yeah. that's not social distancing. Mm -mm. Do you see why? The, the, you know, you, if you're looking for a way to break the rules, you can call it whatever you want you are still not doing the staying at home. You're still not practicing the social distancing, even if you tweet that you are. Yes. Here are some moms uh, social distancing while having their glasses of wine. No, that is not social distancing, ladies. Mm -hmm. That's not social distancing. People are spreading these things like wildfire all over the internet high-fiving each other, saying, let's do this. Everybody do the same. Go sit in a parking lot in, in the trunk of your car, six feet apart from each other, and everyone hang out again. No. No, and if the governor of your state hasn't told you to stay at home yet, like they haven't done yet in North, in North Dakota, Dakota, yeah, exactly. do it anyhow. 
because your neighbors over here in Minnesota, we need you to stay at home. We need you to flatten the curve. And here's some fishermen that thought they were social distancing. It looks like normal activity to me. Opposing bases spotted from the banks of the mighty river, far, far away from Triad Tower. I rep I present our H and A G social distancing mm. at opposite opposing bases. No. no, that's not social distancing. You need to stay in your house unless you have a re a very good reason to even go outside. And I'm going to share an article with you about this that was put out in NJ.com that basically explains that, you know, hanging out with your friends yeah. is not social distancing, even while if you're six feet apart from each other, going out and hanging out with your friends. Um, and uh, it's called COVID parking. You see it and they, they have a picture one of the pictures of, of the many uh, parking lot uh, gatherings that people are doing in their cars, they think they're social distancing when they're really not, and lets people know, sorry, hanging out while six feet apart isn't coronavirus social distancing. You're not doing it. Yeah. You're not doing it right. You're not doing justice. You're not helping flatten the curve. You are likely spreading the virus and taking risks with people's lives. And those lives that will be lost are going to be those of the most vulnerable, the sick, the ones weak, with the weak immune systems. You are putting the lives at, uh, of healthcare workers at risk and or are helping to overwhelm the system further by not doing what you were asked. It says in this article, if you're going to practice intense social distancing, it really means avoiding or limiting contact with people outside of your family and really staying home most of the time unless you need to go out. But any prolonged kind of engagement outside is really still not social distancing. Having that prolonged contact with people that are not in your family is helping to spread the virus period. So, you know, when you have to go out, of course, you have to maintain that social distance so that you don't come into contact with the virus. But that doesn't mean that you can hang out as long as you're six feet away from each other, because that prolonged contact will still spread the virus. Now, people are also thinking that, you know, if I'm related to these people, they're, they're part of my extended family, it's okay for me to go and send the grandkids over to grandma's house for them to visit, right? Because same germs in the family. No, no, just because you're related to someone doesn't mean that they are free from the virus. And if your family members, if one of your family members is still leaving the house popping out to go see their girlfriend, popping out to go and uh, pick something up or uh, go play Dungeons and Dragons with their depressed friend, you are not social distancing. I'm sorry, but you shouldn't go over to your friend's house while social distancing because you are not doing anything to help flatten the curb. You are spreading the virus. I think I shouldn't have to explain this. It should be you know, logical, but here's the thing. We are not operating out of logic right now. Folks are operating in a panic mode. Folks are operating in this, in this, um, feeling of, you know, uh, a little bit stir crazy, a uh, little bit uh, depressed mm -hmm. and anxiety ridden. I had to talk people out of the trees this weekend yeah. because they were getting a little <clears throat> kooky on me, mm -hmm. uh, saying, I'm going to go crazy. I got to go outside. And, and I, and I, you know, I believe that this kind of isolation, um, it, it's going to have uh, profound mental effects on you contact and set up a teleconference with a psychiatrist, a psychologist, or a counsel, a licensed counselor. And, and, and let's get some, uh, mental health services in there. Yep. Uh, contact, uh, you know, 
local uh, suicide hotlines, contact whoever you need to talk to to help you feel more calm. But do not violate the social distancing and go to your friend's house because you need to talk to someone. Don't put the lives of other people or yourselves at risk because you're feeling lonely. And it's like, you know, it's hard to do. And we're going to have to do it for a while. You know, so better get used to it. You know, it's like um, we've been uh, isolated for two weeks now, you know, and it's like, as someone said on uh, online the other day, they said, well, we have blizzards here and you'll be stuck in your house three or four days and you can't leave at all. But it's turning spring out there. You know, and it's I, gorgeous I, outside. It's, it's gorgeous. Uh, grass, you can see the ground first time, you know, in months and months and months. The weather's getting warmer. So I understand, but it's not worth the risk. I've, I've been so startled when I see th these cases that people catch it and they die with quickly. You know, the people, it's not a lingering long disease and the people who make it through, it's really horrible agony to get through it. And it's, some people don't have the effects, you know, but they're the lucky ones. And it's, uh, I don't want that because I just got stir crazy one day. I decided I'd go to the park and go on the swings and be, make sure I'm next to the swing next to the other person and do that sort of stuff or try to go to some public place and then sit far away from people, it's not worth it. No. Uh, Karen comments from Florida saying, down here in Florida, there are checkpoints at two entrances, but they tell us that you have to keep your boats 50 feet from one another. Wow. Yeah. 50 feet. Also, you should just stay home. Yeah. You should be at home. Don't, don't go boating. Don't go boating right now. This isn't time for, for vacationing. Um, the this is getting closer and closer to home for us and for people in this community. Somebody posted that COVID-19 has hit um, their daughter. This is in our local community here in, in uh, Fargo-Moorhead, Duke, mm -hmm. that one of the, their daughter's friend died at age 29 from the wow. COVID-19. Wow. Oh, my goodness. And, folks, as we see more of this, we should be mindful of what we can do to help. That's what we need to be thinking about. What can I do to help? How can I help flatten the curb? How can I make it easier for those who are working in healthcare as first responders, et cetera? Their jobs right now are incredibly hard. Yeah. Let's not make it harder for them to do their jobs, please. And, you know, in North Dakota, they will be giving out misdemeanor charges for people who do not quarantine after travel. Now, did that get lifted or what's the deal with that? They went, they vacillated on that, well, Duke. Well, they had it. They had it that if you came it, it was, the it, state, If you came from another state and there are states in the CDC that are have considered that they're more dangerous outbreaks. So there's a list of those. Um, and if you came from one of those states into North Dakota, you should, you should quarantine for 14 days. However, they implemented this and then people were confused because they'd already come home and they were already back to work. And, you know, someone got home the day before, three days before, and they said, do I have to quarantine? It's only been three days, you know. And they went, well, okay, well, we'll lift it, and we'll restart it again. <laughs> you know, this is the day it really starts. And I thought, then it defeats the purpose. Yes. And I had, I had to look, too, because I thought, well, what about going from Moorhead to Fargo, you know, our, our, you know, our towers in Fargo, you know? Yeah. And do I need a special permission from Homeland Security? You know, yes. media is an essential service. Yep. And um, I don't because Minnesota is not listed on the states that if you travel, you can travel from Minnesota to North Dakota, no problem, because it's not one of the states that's considered to have a larger outbreak. Right, right. Well, the point here being that we need to do everything that we can to make sure that we are not traveling. This is a virus that travels. It yes. traveled from other countries on mm -hmm. planes to our country. It travels across borders. It travels it, 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 in the air, it travels yeah. from one, um, you know, big event to another. Mm -hmm. And by the way, uh, you heard the president on Friday of last week saying that he was going to send the U.S. Uh, naval ship Comfort to New York so that they had this big floating hospital there for mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. overwhelmed healthcare system. Well, guess what, Duke? What? The the ship arrived and crowds went out to oh, watch it. Oh boy! They ignored the social distancing rules just to go out and see 
the boat. That's just normal crowding. They're all shoulder to shoulder trying to peek over the walls and the fence to take to pictures see, to of take this pictures. giant boat. Yes. Oh, that's, that's horrible. It's horrible because every single time you have a group, a giant gathering of people that are close together like that for extended periods of time, yeah. this virus is spreading like fire, yep. like fire. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and folks need to stop taking their kids on play dates and going to the playground. What do we have to do? Cordon off our playground yep, so that you don't take the kids out there. <laughs> you know, the, the, the metal and the, and the plastic that a lot of this mm-hmm. equipment is made out of can have the virus living on it for days, days. Mm-hmm. And kids are not the best at, at, at hygiene. You know, they're licking things and they're, they're getting, they're touching their faces. They're touching their friends' faces. Yeah. You don't want them out there. And please don't be this Maryland guy that has been having throwing parties, bonfires at his house. The cops had to be uh, called last weekend to his home to break up a party. And once again, he had 60 plus people over at his house. So they had to arrest him. Oh, my goodness. Uh, is that what we what we have to do? We have to arrest people to get th- them to stop congregating. Then you throw them in jail, you know, and then, then you have we just you know social distancing issue there, you know. Yes, but I mean, people need to knock this off. Mm-hmm. They need to do the right thing. We shouldn't have to arrest you to get you to stop, uh, you know, spreading virus during a pandemic. Exactly. In Georgia. People decided they would go hiking and they're they're clogging up the the, the, trails. the, the trails full of people. They, they people just don't get it. This isn't your, you know, staycation. You're, this isn't yeah. the time for you to go to your local parks, playgrounds for you to go and check out the hiking trails. And no, you, this is a pandemic. This is for real, guys. Look at what we've learned from Iceland. In Iceland, they have been they have got a very small population mm-hmm. of around 300,000 people, you know? Yeah. Uh the so they they, you know, North Dakota is a bigger population than the whole country of Iceland. And in Iceland, because of the fa- the fact they have such a small population, they can test a lot of people and have a good idea of, you know, how much of the of this virus is spreading throughout their country and isolated and then and isolated and what they found because there they don't have a lack of tests they don't have the problem where we are rationing tests like we do here in the United States where you can only get one if you've flown out of the country and have symptoms or have come in direct contact with someone that had positive tests for the virus there you can take it just cuz there they're testing everyone across the board. And this is what they've discovered. Hmm. Mass testing has shown them that half of the people that tested positive had zero symptoms. Half of the people that tested positive did not show any symptoms, folks. You know, and then even even with that eventide that um, the person you talked to said, well, she wasn't showing any symptoms and we screen everybody when they come in. But that doesn't mean the person's not infected i mean that's the the most startling thing that you might be carrying this around in your activities that you're doing being close to people and doing your job and then you take a test and you find out you're testing positive you know the the picture behind you is it looks like some kind of uh cosplay weird thing because that person's wearing some weird bird beak mask Mm -hmm. The, from the apocalypse. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the heck that's supposed yeah. to be. But th- this is a wedding. Wow. People went ahead and held a wedding during this time because I, I guess they decided they, they just couldn't not have their wedding wow. or postpone it or cancel it until after the pandemic. Mm. And they decided to have the wedding. Uh, the person uh, there is holding, a, a, a I don't know, some kind of a wand or giant yes. pole Pipe or something. that's supposed to be six feet across to, to show people how far away from each other they're supposed to stand oh. while they attend the ceremony. He's the bouncer. And, and, and it's like a joke. Mm. It's, all, it's like you're mocking what authorities have told you 
to save your life, yeah. which is don't go out. If what this research from Iceland uh, is telling us is true, it says early results from the decode genetics indicate that's the company that's testing everybody indicates that a low proportion of the general population has contracted the virus and that about half of those who tested positive are non symptomatic. Hmm. The other half display very moderate cold like flu cold like symptoms. So half of the people that tested positive had some symptoms, but it were they were mild, and the other half had no symptoms at all. I still heard people in a press conference today here in North Dakota say that if you have symptoms, go get tested. If you don't have symptoms, you don't need to be tested. We are still not able to tell which ones among us are the people that are not showing symptoms and are positive. And those people are likely the ones that are spreading this virus most effectively because nobody is afraid to go around them. And we're likely to stay and have more prolonged contact with that person because we don't see any, any signs. And we also see a lot of variety in the incubation of it too. I mean, it's like, it started out that it's like, you know, if you don't, if you've been exposed, you're going to start feeling something in a couple of days, or maybe it's within two weeks. It's been longer than that for some people also. So it's like, we don't have a handle on all the pieces of this. Sure, we're, we're going to make some mistakes doing that, but make the mistakes in a way that it's not going to cause more people to get infected. You know, s s be far away from people. Don't go anywhere. We can live in our homes. We can. We can do this. We live in, we sleep in them every night, don't we? You know, it's like, this, then uh, spend the whole day there, you know, figure out how to get groceries to you. And we've talked a lot about how you clean you know. things up and, and, you know, how you, how you use, you know, your bleach water and disinfectants and do all that stuff and do it at home. Mm -hmm. Now in Denmark, they've actually uh, put little dots on the floor. Uh, here they are shopping. They got these little spots so okay. that you know how far to stand in mm -hmm. line when you're shopping. And at the till, they even have little lines so that you can, you know, right. stay far back from the other person yep. while you're waiting to pay for your items. Wow. We need to start implementing things like this everywhere in America right now. I mean, yesterday. This, 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 mm -hmm. this needs to uh, catch on so that we um, keep our distance. I want to share, because I keep hearing from folks saying, well, you know, only the old people are going to die. Only the old people are going to die. Let me tell you something. Uh, there is a post about a 22 year old who was explaining what her symptoms were like. Okay. And she says, the first couple of days, my symptoms were manageable. I had a fever, mild cough, chills, headache, runny nose. Since I had been to Europe, they allowed me to get tested my second day of symptoms. By the third day, I couldn't keep anything down. I was vomiting constantly. I couldn't sleep. I obviously couldn't eat. I, at that point, I still didn't have my test results back. Day four, the test comes back positive. I develop shortness of breath. It's scary. It feels like your lungs are shallow and you can't take a proper breath. I was weak. I had a 102 degree fever and rising. Fifth day, things got worse and worse. I had never been this ill in my entire life. I was genuinely afraid I would die because that's what it felt like. Six, day six, I was so weak I couldn't even walk. I crawled to the bathroom to vomit. I became so dehydrated I called 911 and they took me in an ambulance to the ER. I stayed there for a day where they rehydrated me and got some anti-nausea meds. Seven through 11, days seven through day 11, uh, ER again, I had never been that weak or fatigued my fever in my life. I either violently shivered in bed all day or would wake up in a literal puddle of my own sweat. I couldn't eat for nine days. I was completely miserable. Wow. Right now I am on my 12th day of symptoms and I have my appetite back, but the end is nowhere in sight. I still have all the major symptoms. A coronavirus diagnosis is dehumanizing and lonely, and I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. You are not invincible. Just because you're in your 20s, you are not invincible. Take it from me and quarantine like your life depends on it because 
it might. Now, listen to an Alabama nurse talking to the people of Alabama about staying at home. Take a listen for yourselves. Listen, my people, citizens of Mobile, Alabama, it is for real out here. When I say it's for real, it's for real. People is dying, dropping like flies. That lie they telling about old people and all that, no ma'am, no sir. Young people, 30 year olds, 20 year olds, 19 year olds. I just was in the ED and we intubated four people within 30 minutes. We had a gunshot victim today who came in the hospital and she was on quarantine. She had um, tested positive and was home on quarantine and got shot. This is crazy. Everybody got it. We can't go out the door, period. We can't go outside. It's so for real, y'all. The TV, you say how do you think they scare you? The TV, no justice. The PPE, they got PPE, but if every patient is positive and having symptoms, what are we supposed to do? We walking around now with gowns on from head to toe. Everybody funky, musty, sweaty. We got gowns on. We got hoodies on. We got glasses on. We got masks on all day long. And the crazy part is, you know, people saying, oh, y'all need to come home. Y'all should just come home, money, and everything. We can't even come home. Because now we've been exposed, so now we have to quarantine for 14 days. So if I got to be here for 14 days, anyway, I might as well come to work. So don't say, like, why you ain't coming home? Because I can't. It's the same thing. Whether I sit in the hotel room or whether I go to work. Everybody got it. Shit. Somebody can go to go to work and pass by me, and I'm going to have it. You feel what I'm saying? I ain't got no PPE on in the hotel. It's just that serious, y'all. Please don't take it lightly. Please don't be at your house partying and kicking it how we was because we ain't know. It's for real. Y'all, this message is not to scare nobody. I just want people to be aware because before we went into those hospitals, we was in here kicking it. We was having a good time. We was partying. We was walking to Target. We was walking to get something to eat. So we went inside that hospital, y'all. It, it is so sad. Like, nurses crying, people packing up and leaving. It is devastating. It is some stuff that you see on TV. Like, people dying, and they just putting a sheet over them, working on the next patient. Patients who need to be in the hospital for other things other than the um, corona. They can't come to the hospital because the corona got it sold up. It's like a real epidemic. A real pandemic, just like they say. The news is not doing this any justice. Like, they need to take the camera and go in the hospital so y'all can really understand. And y'all won't be worried about school or nothing else. You won't be worried about nothing else. Yep. Folks, let me tell you that story now about the choir, the fatal choir. This group of people, <coughs> they were preparing for a tulip festival yeah. in uh, Washington State. And this uh, choir director messaged everyone and said, Hey folks, uh, I, I'm going to go to the, they were, they were weighing whether or not they should postpone it because of the pandemic. And they were, they said, one of the people that directs the choir said, I'm going to be there. I hope you're there. And about 60 people in the choir attended. And they were there for about two and a half hours. They practiced social distancing. They had, um, you know, chairs separated. The people that set up separated the chairs, uh, the, so the safe distance they were supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Everybody took in their own sheet music so that they weren't passing out papers that might be contaminated from one hand to the other. They took every precaution. They, they used hand sanitizer when they came in. They didn't t hug or, or touch each other while they were there. They were just there singing, but guess what? Prolonged period of time, mm -hmm. right? In, in close proximity to each other. By the way, nobody had any symptoms. Nobody was coughing. Nobody was feeling sick. Everybody that went there felt good and had no symptoms. And almost every single person that attended has now gotten, gotten this virus. Three people are dead. 
The oh. majority of the people that went to the, uh, that were in this court chorus were elderly people. So I think that the um, damage to this group is going to be, I mean, catastrophic. It's going to be horrible. And folks, here's something else that we need to think about. We don't know enough about what this virus is going to do, how people that have gotten it and recovered from it are going to fare if they come into contact with it again. Does it mutate? Will you die the second time around? They say some uh, some initial findings from China indicate that people, uh, especially those who were treated with certain medications that weaken their heart tissue, have a higher chance of dying of a heart attack the second time around. Well, now we're learning that the curve may not be getting flattened in Wuhan like they've been trying to tell us because reports are coming out of China that the crematoriums are filling thousands of urns every day with ashes, with the remains of coronavirus every day. And there's hour long lines at these crematoriums for people to pick up the remains of their loved ones. Why aren't they reporting the deaths? Mm -hmm. If this is the case, it could be that they're trying to kickstart their economy again and they don't want the people to get afraid of the pandemic still looming over them. It would be a criminal act of a massive scale, but I wouldn't put it past China to do. I wouldn't put it past them. They hid information from the rest of the world when the pandemic began. They would hide information now. I mm -hmm. would not doubt that. Yeah, I agree. And I think that we need to start thinking about what the ramifications of that are. What are the implications of that? If true, if this is true and people continue to die, but China is not reporting the numbers, then we may have to think about social distancing and self-quarantining for the foreseeable future until a vaccine is created. That's just the reality that we need to start putting into our heads. What do we do with the homeless population? We continue to, we continue to have this, see discussions about that. In the state of Nevada, they're putting chalk lines on the parking lot to show people how far away they're supposed to be sleeping from each other <laughs> on the street. Oh, my goodness. These are concrete parking lots for yeah. the homeless to sleep in, and they yeah. put social distancing boxes on them. Even though it's a state that has probably thousands of rooms available in mm -hmm. hotels and motels where exactly. people aren't and attending right no now. No one's vacationing. No. Nobody's using those. Uh, Missouri had a 600% jump in coronavirus cases, which is the largest increase in the entire country. Um, and, of course, I think this has a lot to do with the testing. The president just announced that uh, Abbott Laboratories is going to be using tests that can return uh, positive in, like, five minutes. Yeah, right. It takes, like, longer to get a negative response back. But this is going to ramp up are uh, numbers, of course, because we're going to have a lot more testing. But mm -hmm. that's also a good thing because we'll have a better idea of how bad the situation is, exactly. how how much of the contagion we need to contain. In New Jersey, um, 700 police officers have now tested positive for coronavirus. And folks are still out in the streets fighting, uh, you know, committing all sorts of stuff stupid acts of yes. covid idiots. Yep. covid idiots. And you're you're endangering the law enforcement when you do that. You're endangering first responders when you do that. Um, let me remind folks what the grim situation is in New York. This is the back of a refrigerated truck that is lined with bodies outside of a New York City hospital from just yesterday. This image was taken by a nurse and we're unfortunately going to see more and more images like this. I want to remind folks that when your loved one goes to the hospital, 
you can't put everyone in the car and take your loved one to the hospital. You're not going to get into the hospital with your loved one. Only the person that is suspected and needs testing for the virus will be allowed to go in. So think about that, plan on that. And if you're going to send a loved one to the emergency room or if they have to go to the emergency room because they have uh, symptoms of COVID-19, think about how you're going to stay in touch with them. Make sure that they have a uh, charger for their phone. They sh- make sure they have their phone. Mm-hmm. Make sure that they have a device or multiple devices on which you can get a hold of them because nobody is going to be allowed to go inside that hospital and yeah. you may never see your loved one again. Oh, that's horrible. If they die, they're going to die alone. And you probably won't get to see their body until it's af- after it's cremated. So stay home. Stay home, please, for the love of everything you care about. In Tijuana, they have finally announced that all restaurants are going to be only doing delivery service, finally. And check this out. Video has emerged of El Chapo's mom shaking hands, Chapo Guzman's mom shaking hands with the president of Mexico. He says to her in the video, don't worry, I got your letter. I got your letter. And he ran over to her vehicle to to shake her hand. He uh, acted like a fanboy of Chapo Guzman's mom. And I'm sure she's probably a local folk hero s or heroine or whatever you want to call them. And uh, to the people of uh, Mexico, she's, you know, like, you know, some kind of... um, um, celebrity, celebrity, mm-hmm. but to see the president of Mexico fawning over what is likely one of the uh, heads of organized crime in Mexico is really astonishing. Of course, in the face of everything that's going on in Mexico with regard to the response to the pandemic, it's also not that surprising mm-hmm. coming from Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador. Exactly. And speaking of um, bad actors, there has been another scam that has been exposed because of the pandemic. This one is in the Airbnb industry. Take a look at this, Duke. It turns out that, do you, do you know of people that have Airbnbs, you know? Yeah. And, and they rent out places, all sorts of people make income from renting out Airbnbs. Mm -hmm. But there is a whole bunch of scammers and frauds that do it with someone else's property. It's not their property. They're um, uh, posting about this. Uh, This comes out of CSB. It says, a relative of mine has 20-something Airbnbs. He's in his 30s. And I've wondered how the... <laughs> bleep. How the, how the bleep, bleep did he manage to buy 20-plus properties in high school in, in um, this college city, in this college town, in a space of just a few years? Hmm. But, you know, asking about people's money business is, you know... Uh, recipe for disaster so they backed off of, of saying anything well come to find out turns out he wasn't buying anything he was one of those folks who rents an unfurnished house furnishes it and then secretly sublets it on Airbnb every single upcoming booking has now canceled because of the pandemic oh, yeah. mm-hmm. and in a few days oh, yes. he's going to owe $50,000 in rent which flatly he ain't going to be, gonna be you know, he's not going to have it. Uh, and 20 landlords are going to be pretty ticked off yep. when they realize that they've been supplying housing to Airbnb for the last few years. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of scammers are going to get caught out in this one. What do you think, Duke? Well, I think that, I, you know, since I've heard those stories come out, I'm mean, they're trying to figure out. It's like you, you're, you're paying, you're collecting fees and you're paying the other one, collecting fees and paying the other one. And um, 
you know, just it's a shell game to actually get it done. But the landlords are going to have unpaid rent, and they're going to have a bunch of stuff in there, too. Yeah. And they're going to have to go through a process of eviction. It's going to cost them money and time. <clears throat> and so it's just like, I, I, I'm i going to be really aware if, if we ever use another a, a, um, Airbnb, Airbnb, you know, I'm going to really check into it before mm-hmm. I end up getting scammed like that or participating in a scam. Airbnb scammers, watch out. Finally, I have from uh, a woman who has been on lockdown for two months in China. She has some great tips I wanted to pass on right. to my listeners. Of course, she recommends wearing a mask, personal protection equipment, yeah. anytime you go out, at any time, wear the mask all at, all the time. And it says surgical mask protects you from others, not you, uh, others from you, not you from others. Goggles that seal Properly, mm-hmm. gloves, and a hat. Put it all on. And then, of course, when you get back home, make sure to take a shower. Remove all your clothes. Do that in a specific spot and in, 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 in limit your entrances. If you have multiple ways to get into your house, pick one and use that one and make everyone use that one so that you can disinfect and have a spot where everybody takes off their stuff at that entrance and... You don't have to worry about having multiple points of of, uh, the virus entering your home. When you come in, uh, you want to avoid uh, going out again and again and again. You you can't be popping out for a few things. Oh, you know, are you one of those shoppers that goes to the store and meanders around and goes, oh, I want that too. That's not how we got. We have to plan ahead now. We can't just like wander around the store you need to go in there like you're holding your breath okay Mm -hmm. you need to go in know exactly where you're going get your stuff and get out okay so in order to do that you have to pre-plan this woman said she doesn't want vectors of possible infection coming to her house so she doesn't order takeout she cooks all her food at home to minimize the deliveries of anything to her house. I've shown you on this program a number of COVID idiots that are licking packages, coughing on food, trying to contaminate people on purpose, like the COVID idiots they are. Mm-hmm. And you don't want the possibility of one of those COVID idiots putting your family and your life at risk. So I would follow this woman's advice and minimize the amount of takeout that you are taking out. Uh, and one of these, uh, is my favorite ad- piece of advice. No visitors, no matter what, no visitors, zero visitors. Mm-hmm. Now when buying fruits, try to get fruits that have a peel or that are easily washed. Raspberries are not easily washed. Apples are bananas are great. Vegetables that can be cooked right now are good, but not lettuce, nothing that's raw. Unless it can be easily washed, lettuce cannot be easily washed. Remember, water does not remove the virus, soap does. Soap with a good lather. Rinse even with with warm or rinsing only even with warm or hot water is not going to get rid of the virus. So make sure that you wash all of your produce very, very well. Your home is only as secure as your weakest link. If your teenage kid is popping out to go get a Big Mac or see their girlfriend, all of your quarantine efforts are in vain. They're bringing the virus into your home and that will be disastrous for the rest of your family. Before you go out, think about what you want. Think about what you need. Don't do what a lot of times we do in our normal everyday lives is forget something and then have to go back out to the store again. So think about everything that you're going to need. Do you need batteries? Do you need a toothbrush? Do you have your favorite shampoo? Do you need some special ingredients for baking? Do you need candles, matches, lighters? You don't need to go hoard things like it's a doomsday scenario, but do give serious thought to everything that you might need so you can do one trip and then not go out for a long time. When you do shop, remember, don't dawdle. Get in, get out. 
buy some things that make you feel happy, that indulge you in some way. But understand that you should not now be trying to be frugal. These are going to be trying times and you have to conserve. So try to find some cheap alternatives to the things that you crave. You like donuts or cake from the bakery? Mm -hmm. Can you make it yourself? Yeah. Can you buy it in a box and make it yourself? How about video games? Now is not the time to buy yourself the top of the line new Xbox. Try to be comfortable with, you know, some of the old titles. Um, pull out the spindles of your old DVDs and watch yep. some old movies, mm -hmm. you know. Find thing, things that make you happy, but do it on the cheap side. And if you go out to exercise, stay far away from people, not just 10 feet, 20 feet, 100 feet, 200 feet away, okay? Don't go near people at all. This is not that hard to do. We still have phones. We still have FaceTime. We got Zoom. You can find ways to socialize without being face-to-face. -face. And all of this, at some point, will come to an end. So, you know, let that give you solace. This isn't going to be forever and ever. Another thing that makes folks ang anxious that we haven't talked about is clutter. And if you're one of those folks that has a lot of clutter in your house, it's chaotic, it's stressful, it's harder, it's going to make it much harder for you to quarantine and, st and stay in place. It gives you less space and it makes you really feel like you're imprisoned. This is a great time to organize everything in your house. Have less. Don't bother bringing things that you don't want to go to Will or the Salvation Army. Toss it out. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I guarantee that they're going to put it in the landfill anyway. Even before the virus, the donations probably weren't all going to um, people that were going to, you know, use them at a later time. And, and during a pandemic, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So uh, reduce the amount of things that you have. It's time to reduce in every way possible. If you, to get your excess excesses and indulgences in order, you like to grab eight handfuls of toilet paper to wipe. Now you're going to have to do four squares and do it consistently. You know, only what you need. You what you one of those people that never finished leftovers because it weren't appetizing. You got to start freeze them and thaw them out. Need them a different day. Even after you've sterilized all your groceries, you have to assume that they are still contaminated. For example, if you wiped off your bag of chips, you should still assume that's contaminated when you get ready to eat them, empty the chips into a clean bowl, throw the bag away, wash your hands, and then eat the bowl, eat from the eat the chips from from the bowl. Yes, it's obnoxious, there's extra steps there, but it's an extra layer of safety for everyone. Folks, that's all I have. For you today, I do want to share one last funny tidbit. Okay. People are getting so creative now on the, t on the TikTok. I don't mm -hmm. know if you know what the TikTok is, but people are getting so creative. This is, uh, you know, a reality uh, parody, reality show parody about the coronavirus. Here you go. Your laugh for the day. Well, I'm back home hanging out with my friends, Eden and Taryn. So how are you guys doing? Good. <clears throat> Eden starts coughing directly into my mouth. Oh my god. I cannot breathe. Did you just cough? There was something in my throat. I'm having a panic. Eden is coughing in my mouth. Terrence starts dancing. The disrespect was so potent. I have a vision. I am sick. I just had a vision. So in shock right now. I am sick. Of your disrespect. <laughs> Eden, how dare you? <coughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? A little laughter goes a long way. Folks, stay safe, stay home. God bless and good night. You've been listening to 88.1 FM, KPPPLP Fargo Moorhead, where we are adding local color to your airwaves. Good night, everybody. Good night.
Thank you.